Hey you guys and welcome to my October, November, and December 2016 wrap up. Oh my god guys, it's the last video that you guys are going to see from me for a while. And besides my hashtag a year -thon, you guys won't see me because I literally did like 33 videos in a row. And you guys are like probably so tired of seeing your subscription box feed every single day. Like wow, I'm not even sure if I'm going to be doing vlogmas again next year. But if you guys would like me to, just let me know now so <clears throat> I can mentally propel myself and maybe write down a few ideas in advance for next year. So um, let's go ahead and get started on the wrap up part. Actually I will put a playlist of all the video everyday slash vlogmas videos down below so if you guys haven't seen any of those and you want to check it out there you go. So the first thing that I read in October was The Downs by Kim Fielding. This was 99 cents on the Kindle. I gave it three stars. I will say though that my mood in this book <laughs> has really determined what I gave this for now. Which is why I say that. Because I was expecting like this revenge almost like type assassin thing. Maybe I built that assassin part in my head. But literally it was about this guy who was falsely accused and he was thrown down into the downs. It's just supposed to be this like monstery place where like people like like demons rip you apart or whatever and I wasn't really expecting demons there's like I think we all know that but it turned more into like a romance more than anything so he gets thrown down into the downs he gets saved and it turns more into a romance between him and the guy that saved him more than anything and the revenge part of it just didn't really get developed and I'm sitting up there like but I wanted revenge like the characters were well thought out they're both great characters this the setting was really interesting the writing was good but I was still so mad about like the revenge part of it like right now I, I can't see past that I, I'm giving it three stars for now maybe if I'm like get back in a romance route and I read this I'll be like yeah four stars but for now I'll set a three star yeah cuz I'm mad cuz that synopsis was not okay and then the next thing that I read was a reread read, and that is Impulse by Ellen Hopkins I had read this and some other books during a hashtag year thong for mental health month and this one follows these three kids who tried and failed to commit suicide and we get to see these three different teenagers and their point of views and we just take a journey into like what is going on when they're at this hospital we get to see the reasons why their backgrounds what's going to happen what's going on now and I really just thought it was really realistic and kind of I know for some people too maybe too painful for them to read and stuff but I gave it five out of five stars again I really loved it and I just really loved the way it was written in this poetry format but yeah I definitely recommend everyone give it a read and then the next thing that I read was Alice in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll. If you guys are with me on this, when you're a kid and you read a lot, there's like a whole bunch of abridged stuff when you're younger. So you know like the kid versions of Alice in Wonderland and stuff like that. And then when you're older you're like, hold on, but there's a bigger book. <laughs> like this isn't that big, but you guys know what I'm saying. And I was really just finally glad to finally read this book like it is totality like all of it and I really loved it and I gave it five out of five stars and I also would have to say that I also listened to it uh, the audio version by Scarlett Johansson and she read it she read it really great too so I gave that a five out of five stars and both of them awesome and then the next thing that I read was it's kind of a funny story by Ned Vecini uh, sadly the author um, committed suicide and I was really really sad about that but I have originally seen the movie and then I had the book like not either not soon after that or I probably like had already bought it I can't remember it's shameful but I was like oh yeah I should finally pick this up and I did and it follows this boy who checks himself into a mental hospital and we see what led him there into this point in his life and we see what happens to him while he's in the hospital and I really enjoyed it and I gave it four out of five stars I believe like some of it is like semi true for the author and the fact that he did the same when he checked himself in but a lot of it is still like fish fictionalized and a lot of other aspects so there we go and then the next book that I read is Rosemary and Rue by Sean McGuire. 
I love this book, you guys. I was just like into some, needed some urban fantasy in my life, apparently. Um, this follows this girl, October Day, and she is a changeling. She's half fairy, half human, and she's working on a case for her fairy side when something happens and she loses like tons of years with the um, of course out the world still moved on without her so when she pops up again I think she really has a good excuse but some people were not like that accepting of it more in her human life because um, I don't think they know that she's fairy and then with the fairy she's kind of shunning them and she's like oh this is all your fault in this mess I don't want to deal with it so she's just kind of really in this depressed awkward state or whatever but then one of the fairy friends dies and she feels obligated to investigate because she's a private investigator and goes on this journey and I love this book I love the characters in here but when we were in the plot at one point I could see something coming and I was like man you kind of kind of built that up over a few books and just let it fly from there but I really enjoyed it nonetheless and I gave it four out of five stars there we go and then the next thing that I read was Crimson Death by Laurel K. Hamilton this is the 25th Really, I almost hit myself with this book. This isn't the first time. Um, this is the 25th book in the Anita Blake Vampire Hunter series. I would definitely say check out the series. The first like 10, 12, really great. Then you start hitting like a lull in there where it's just like turn into an erotica series in some parts. And even I was just kind of like, can, can we? Can we get some plot back? But the last few books have been like really a lot of plot. Actually, I feel like this one more than ever has really been managing well between the plot and her love life in this. Uh, so that's great. We get to see more about Damon in this book. I really love exploring some of the other characters and having a case. And I just love all that. Hopefully in the next book, we get to see some of the police department in her hometown because I would love to see where they are at this point. I really just love taking a journey in this world. Like getting the book each year and just reading it is like so like I don't know relaxing. I gave it five out of five stars. And then the next book that I read was Illuminae by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff and I gave it five out of five stars. And then I read The Big Four by Agatha Christie. This is book number five and it was the last Agatha Christie book for me that year because I just felt like I was hitting like a wall where I get that like I loved it and that's why I kept picking it up because I knew I would read it but I was just like okay we've hit that point where no more is enough for right now so this one I felt like I really got Sherlock vibes in it and I researched it between like there's like this whole argument between Sherlock and Hercule Perot as with any detective thing but I just want to see which one came first in this aspect for this one and I remember finding the answer but I can't remember it right now but I just kept like having Moriarty feels <laughs> throughout this book because of the far-reaching plot and like everything and I just loved it again so much but I love Hercule Perot and I love Sherlock they're both the same yet different. They're like there's a they're both genius and arrogant, but they have very different methods on how they solve the crime and how they are acting. So, yeah. Then the last book that I read was Gemina, which is the second book in the Illuminate Files by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. Love these guys. I read and listened to the audiobooks. I would definitely re recommend reading and listening to it because I just felt like it was such an experience. Like the audiobook is such like this drama thing that goes on with some of the stuff, especially because of how this format is done with some of these, um, how like some of these files are written it was really great to hear about it while I was reading along with it so that was great the first book follows Katie and Ezra as we see the point of view from what is happening in this big galactic war but we see a whole bunch of other point of views because it's like really like a file about people's observations and five out of five stars you guys and just I can't wait for the third book okay the second book actually doesn't follow the same characters it follows totally different characters and so was the third book i didn't know that going in number one i thought this was a standalone at first and then i heard there's gonna be a sequel and then i was like oh really and then i was reading this and i was like i don't know how you're gonna come back like how, what, what and then i was like oh they follow different people that makes totally sense like they all take part of the, from the same event but like from different points of views from other people's like yeah so there we go moving on from that 
in November, the first thing I read was How to Be Drawn or Finished Reading was Terrence Hayes. I gave this one, it's a poetry book, four out of five stars. I definitely want to reread and research a little bit more what he was talking about in here. But overall, I really loved it. And it was like one of the last books where I actually tabbed stuff in it. And I was just really happy. Four out of five stars. And then I read Hell and High Water by Charlie Cochet. Yes, I reread it. I was so happy I did because like I got off to like I almost started it one time and then I was like no and then I did it and I was like so happy five out of five stars it follows this guy Dex who lives in this world where there are Therons Therons are basically like shift shifters something have happen and I think it was the Vietnam War where one of the bombs like um, made a transformation in the DNA of people and allowed them to shift and they thought it was going to be over in that generation but it happened and it was passed down and it is a thing and there's a lot of prejudice against the Therons and stuff but right now they have like their own police force where they kind of police their own and they try to foster human and Theron relations <laughs> but we follow Dex who's a human and he is in the human police force at the beginning but he gets kind of updated something happens to the third it happens within the first couple of like chapter so you'll know what goes on right away but then he gets to work with his brother and his father in this and then he's kind of having to deal with this team who lost a team member like a years or prior and they still hadn't found anyone to fit and this really is kind of like the last straw where the higher ups are concerned and then him and his um partner kind of getting along just kind of going like this and then of course maybe a little too close so we get to see their that relation develop and then we get to see like the case they're working on while we have this other whole arc and the author has like her own website where you can like dive deeper into like this world and everything where their arms are like she has like a whole she has like it casted and everything it's really wonderful and then I read the Mean Old Mean by Ina. I love this book. It was so cute. I don't count every children's book that I read, but once in a while, I do have some. And this one was it. This is by Jack Prelowski and illustrated by Arno Lobel. It's like an older book, so maybe the illustrations aren't what kids are really used to. But I did read this to the kids, and the kids really enjoyed it too. So there is that. It follows this mean old mean hyena who does really mean things to people. And like just kind of like the consequences of how like others treat you or you treat others, which is like what happens in this book. I really enjoyed it. So I kept it and didn't give it to the kids. <laughs> and then, because I had bought them and I gave a lot of the kids like from a library sale of the kids some books but then I kept a few and then I read Soft Magic by Uphill Chesla it's another poetry thing and this is what it says girl who taught you to be so silent to fold your opinion back into your mouth so neatly that's the line that stood out most to me I love that so four out of five stars to this poetry and novel. that one I believe I borrowed because I borrowed a lot from the prime thing so you can only borrow one a month but I always try to I tried to remember each month like some to borrow something but I didn't always remember um, then I read teaching my mother how to give birth by Warson Shire I gave this one four out of five stars it really I really felt like I read the majority in quotes either way which is not surprising because of how little this is but I definitely want to reread this in the future and there and then I read Blood and Thunder by Charlie Cochet. This is the second book in the Helen High Water series and we follow Dex and evolving things and I think there's going to be one more for Dex and his partner's point of view and then we're going to go on to some of the other team members. So I'm really excited. If anything, I hit that wall sooner rather than later for this series where I know I love it so I really want to get the physical books and the physical books like they never change like their how much they cost they're going to be like 15 16 dollars that's just how it's going to be so I think I'm going to buy one a month because the matchbook price is only a 99 cents as well so I could still get like a Kindle copy for 99 cents and just pay like for a physical book because I want to own the physical copies for myself not really for anyone else like what I started doing with the cut and run series actually if you guys have seen one of my videos I don't know where I discussed that in there but I basically bought all those books on Kindle already because they're like five dollars each for each hell and high water so I was just like 
Might as well just do a monthly thing. Moving on from that. <laughs> um, then I listened to how the Marquis got his coat back. That is a spin-off um, short story thing. I don't have the anthology in which it was. I just listened to this from the BBC radio when it was available. And I really want to get my own audible copy. It's available on there for like $10, I believe, because I really want to re-listen to it. I really like the Marquise, and I really love the story of how he got his cart back. And it was just nice to see the whole, hear the whole cast back again. See, it was so much like a movie in my head that I just, I hope that Neil Gaiman writes another story and the Never Word thing, and that we get everyone back to voice them. And then I listened to The Magician's Elephant by Kate Decca Mills. It's a middle grade novel. Like a, it was an audible daily deal and it sounded so good when I listened to the sample that I got it and I listened to it and it was just so wonderful and magical. If all is his boy and he goes to buy some food that he's supposed to do but he stops by like this um, psychic person and he asks a question that he's like, um, is my sister really dead? And it's just like so heartbreaking and so like lovely at the same time. And she tells him something it has to do with an elephant will lead you to her or whatever or lead you to the answer. And it was just like so cute and wonderful and they have like various stories going on throughout the story of who he lives with, who is like other people in the story and how it all comes together in the end. And I really enjoyed it and I gave it 5 out of 5 stars. They're so cute. And then I read The Legend of Spookly the Square Pumpkin and I gave it 4 out of 5 stars. I don't own this book but I definitely want my own copy. It follows the story of the square pumpkin who is the only square pumpkin in a pumpkin patch full of round pumpkins. And then of course something happens and he learns that being a square pumpkin isn't so bad and it was just like really cute and I really enjoyed it. And then the next book that I read or listen to was Born a Crime. I actually do actually own the audio CDs for this one, but my aunt borrowed it. I did get it from Audible first though. The, I liked it so much and I really, and my aunt was interested in it and I was like, you'll definitely want to hear it more than you want to read it. Like you want to hear the stories from his voice and how he says it and it's just like you get to hear stories from his childhood where he grew up in Africa or during the time of the apartheid I believe and where it was illegal for a black and a white person to have a kid like they would literally take the kid away and stuff like that I'm not sure what they did with him but um he had to be hidden and just kind of how he grew up and stuff so that's why it's called born a crime and then I gave it five out of five stars obviously and then and those December the first thing that I read was the princess says herself and this one by Amanda Lovelace. I really enjoyed it. I would say in this case, because if you guys watched my last wrap up thing, I was like, one person, I was like, it was Tumblr cliche in a bad way. It's, this one is more Tumblr cliche in a good way. I really enjoyed the poems in this one and just kind of like the whatever it says. And um, I was like, it's just like short and to the point poetry and I really love the simplicity about it but still it makes an impact for some people. I know some people loved it and some people didn't so but I really enjoyed it so I would recommend it if you want to and then I'll, I'll try to do like a reading of a few of my favorite poems from there and then I read Moth and Spark by Anne Lenard as well as listening to the audiobook that was a thing this year reading and listening to the same as long as I enjoyed the voice and didn't feel either the urge to like hit the person or laugh because I laughed at some of the audio samples I listened to like I really wanted to listen to the book but but I couldn't because of that voice but moving on from that it was really awkward at one point or twice and I was really glad that I listened to this audiobook alone because I was not expecting that. There's a reason why I don't listen to audiobooks for romance. That's all I have to say and I guess you can imagine why. But this follows um, this guy and he lives in like this land. It's a fantasy land and something happens with the dragons and they came to visit him but he doesn't remember anything he doesn't even remember reading the dragons until he can't until the time is right so right now he knows that there is an upcoming war and the dragons are on the other side and he doesn't know what to do about it he's like a prince and but he's going to take over the kingdom from his father one day and then he meets this girl who kind of has like some secrets like powers of her own and stuff and it just becomes more of like like we get to see their 
romance in between all of this stuff. So I felt like watching these two kind of grow and learn together and their relationship was the main core of this novel and not really the fantasy aspect, although all of it was interesting. But I really love that. I really love both the characters so much that it was fine that it focused mainly on that while also advancing the plot and stuff, which is something I really enjoyed. And it was a standalone, as far as I know, there's not going to be a sequel or anything. Um, so I gave it 5 out of 5 stars and I'm glad I did not pay attention to the reviews. This is why I don't, <laughs> like I read reviews and stuff once in a while or just look over to see like what the average review is. Um, but I don't normally like go by that because usually I'll like a book and somebody else won't. That's just how it's going to be. And this one a lot of reviews are bad but I loved it so there's that. <laughs> and then the next book that I read was American Gods by Neil Gaiman. I listened to the cast audio version. There's two versions, one read by somebody else and then the cast. I, don't, I was surprised that I didn't see what version that was read by Neil Gaiman because that's what usually happens. But I loved it. Gave it four out of five, I mean five out of five stars. I link my review to it down below. Uh, it follows this boy, guy named Shadow, who's paroled early from prison because due to his wife dying and on his way he meets this guy um, who his name is Mr. Wednesday and there's some really shady stuff going on and I won't say much more than that I say a little bit more in my review but if you guys see like the trailer or just you kind of like get what's going on if you just know the synopsis so yeah then the next thing that I did was read some Edward Gorey basically to catch up on my goal which I did achieve. I read 101 books. Um, my goal was 100 and that's how I did it because of Edward Gorey. These are bind ups of all his novels and they're like short adult picture graphic novel books if you want to go there. And I read the rest of the ones that I had in here and then I had gotten this one so I read all of these ones and I just loved them all. and. I will go through them later, but for right now, I will say that Edward Gorey is amazingly and disturbingly awkward. It's like, like you love his stuff, and then on some point you're just like, that was like, I wonder what he was thinking during that time. Like, it's really weird. So if you guys have read Edward Gorey, let me know down below if you guys like him. If you guys think maybe I should start doing weekly wrap-ups or recent reads where you read five, but every five books you do a wrap-up. And now I'm about to go through every single one so of these books. <laughs> okay. Um, the battery. No, not the battery. The the thing stopped recording. So I'm going to guess. Usually it happens when it hits like 20 minutes. I didn't realize how long I was talking for. So I'm not going to go through all the Edward Gorey books individually. But I will put links to some of the ones that I actually did like tiny reviews of. Like even if it's just like a GIF reaction, I'll link it down below if you guys are interested. Just tell me if you guys have read any Edward Gorey before, if you guys plan to. I definitely would recommend buying like the first bind up and seeing if it's your thing or just borrowing it from the library. And I'll talk to you guys later. <laughs> Bye.